Merci. First, can I thank the Geneva Press Club for this initiative and all involved in putting out the call. It's a really valuable new strand to the campaign and I'm only sorry that I can't be with you in person. My name's Tim Dawson and I was present at every day of the hearings that considered Julian Assange's extradition and the subsequent court sittings. I attended on behalf of the National Union of Journalists in the UK and Ireland and the International Federation of Journalists, as well as reporting the hearings for a daily newspaper. The concern of journalists is simple. If Julian Assange can be threatened with prosecution as a spy, what might that mean for other journalists? To answer this question, it's worth starting with the United States indictment, published in May 2019. This is the basis on which prosecution is sought. The first paragraph reads as follows. Assange and WikiLeaks repeatedly encouraged sources with access to classified information to obtain information to release on the WikiLeaks website. Assange encouraged sources to 1. Circumvent legal safeguards on information. 2. Provide that protected information to WikiLeaks for public dissemination. And 3. Continue the pattern of illegally procuring and providing protected information to WikiLeaks for the dis distribution to the public. Now, that sounds to me as though it's what any journalist might do. Finding a source who's witnessed wrongdoing, encouraging them to seek out evidence of that wrongdoing, and then taking receipt of that information in a way that doesn't draw attention to what's happening. So, we come to the question, did the information that Assange published reveal any actions about which the rest of the world might reasonably be concerned? The example that everyone cites is the collateral murder video that shows US soldiers shooting at civilians and journalists while whooping like schoolboys on a sugar rush. It's a sick-making example of a war crime, but I will leave that to others. What about the case of Khaled al-Masri? He was the German Lebanese citizen who the Americans arrested in Macedonia because they'd mistaken him for someone else. He was flown to the other side of the world, tortured horrifically, and then, when the error was finally recognised, he was dumped on an anonymous roadside in Albania. The Americans refused to acknowledge any wrongdoing, but, in part because of Assange's evidence, al Masri did receive compensation for his ordeal from Macedonia. There's plenty more. Guantanamo detainees released because, of the war logs provided because the war logs provided critical evidence. 15,000 deaths added to the known Iraqi war dead. An illegal program of drone assassinations exposed and thereby brought to an end. Whether you consider Assange a journalist or not, these are stories of international importance that paint a disturbing picture of modern warfare. In my 30 years as a journalist, I can't think of a single colleague who wouldn't have been thrilled to break any of those exclusives, much less all of them. Let's imagine Assange is sent to the United States, prosecuted and then sent to prison for 175 years. He'd be denied access to friends and to family, and in all likelihood d d denied confidential access to his lawyers. What message would that send to the next generation of investigative journalists? I fear that it's this. If you're hand handed a classified document proving criminality, hand it back. If a whistleblower reaches out to you, turn your face. Forget about shining a light on corruption. We can fill the media with celebrities, home decor features and football. That is what is at risk. And that's why I encourage every journalist and anyone who values free expression to join the call. Don't extradite Assange. Don't prosecute Assange. And don't let free speech die because you did nothing.